Hello and welcome to another episode of Mike and Dave's Hi-Fi Riff. I'm Mike Evans. And I'm David Price. And David, on this week's episode, what are we going to be doing? Well, you know, because you've got it in your... In my hand. In my hand. Yeah. It's this tiny, weeny yeah. little box. Look how tiny this is. This is the smallest bit of hi-fi we've reviewed in ages, isn't it? It it's, is, it's, it's yeah. sweet. And it's the Cambridge Audio MXN10 streamer. Correct. Uh, sort of... Well, to say half size streamer is a bit of an understatement, isn't it? It's it's yeah. equal. It's absolutely equal. Very minimalist as well. Yeah. Not too many buttons there on the front to yep. play with. And um, I think that's all good. I agree. If you ask me. Yep. I agree completely. It's nice to have something that's incredibly easy to use for a change. Absolutely. So um, if you're gonna have you know, if you think about it, the the benefit of digital, if you've got if you don't have to have a CD mechanism inside something, why does it have to be so big. Exactly. And yep. so complicated. Yeah. No, I couldn't agree more. Yep. And uh, actually, of course, there's a little bit more. With all hi-fi, the fun really is at the back of the system, isn't it, rather than the front? Um, it's frustrating. Well, well, it is for geeks like you, Mark. <laughs> I know, it's true. <laughs> it's so true. And it's really frustrating when um, you, you know you see sort of uh, photos of, of hi-fi and stuff and they don't show the back panel, because that's all I'm interested well, in. Well, um, it might, might be for you, but again, for normal people, they just want to see the front. <laughs> no, very true. So this but has got... This has got lots of connectivity. So you obviously you plug your Ethernet in, all good. Um, you can plug USB media in, yep. so you can have your your files remotely. You don't have to stream, um, you know, from the cloud or whatever. Yep, um, I can play my extensive collection of memory sticks from two thousand nine. Yes, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Wi-Fi antenna, Bluetooth antenna, if you wanted to Bluetooth to it. Yep, not really strongly recommended, no. but uh, but you can do it. Uh, and then a, a a nice single line output, not balanced. Yep. But we're talking, how much RCA are we talking? Phonos. Uh, RCA phonos. Well, yeah. How much is this thing? 449. So what's not to like? Yeah, what's absolutely. Not to like? Superb. Yeah. Great value for money. Um, optical out, coaxial out yeah. as well. So so um, you could use this as just your streamer yeah. and have an external DAC as well if you wanted to. Yeah. Um, this has got, um, what, what, are, what are our DAC chips in here? So uh, ESS Sabre, uh, ES... Mm. 9033Q, if uh, memory serves. <laughs> so I'll just get my... Uh, like that's going to be wrong. Just put my pen in my top pocket. <laughs> so. Your white coat pocket. Exactly, yeah. So ESS, ESS DAX. Yeah. So, yeah, pretty standard pretty standard DAX then, really. Absolutely, yeah. We did the, the, the other Cambridge recently, didn't we? we yeah. We, which was the, um, uh, the, the, the sort of full-size streamer. Yeah. And that uses the uh, Wolfram DAX. Uh, Wolfson, yeah. Wolfson DAX, yeah. I beg your pardon. Yeah, the Wolfson both, use those as, and as, as well. well. Yeah. So you can quote the model number, <laughs> the serial number, the batch it came from, and I can't even get the primary name right. What does that tell you? <laughs> um, yeah, so so that, but, but actually, um, I think one of the things which you talked about on that video was how unusual that was. Yeah. Um, but they were kind of squeezing the last drop out of those DAX, weren't they? Um, but this one, they've kind of gone back to the more traditional ESS. Yeah. Uh, and but it, uh, it does, yeah, it does all the sort of, uh, you know, usual default uh, high-res high stuff. Um, I'm yes. not sure that many people have uh, 600 and, uh, 768 kilohertz 32-bit uh, files. Uh, no, sure. But so, you know, we don't sure. need to lose any sleep about that. But it does pretty much anything that's around. Yeah. Uh, and, um, of course... All of the uh, you know modern uh, streaming services, um, Spotify, internet radio. yes, internet radio, yeah, yeah. Um, and and actually, can I just give a bit of a plug here as well because it, the the Stream Magic app, which yeah. which Cambridge um, which works with this, yeah, um, is really good. Yeah, it's really really good. It's a really well thought out yeah. app. We've used it before. We used it before with the previous Cambridge streamer, yes. um, and and it's it's pretty intuitive. It's dead easy to set up. Yes, and what you do is obviously you download it, and then you, you it says to you what do you want what do you want to use this app for? And if you want to use it for Cobuzz, then you just put your Cobuzz credentials in. If you want to use it for Tidal or Spotify or Internet Radio, it's really that simple. And then whatever you add to the app, that's the options you have on your home screen. Yeah, um, I you, really like yeah, it. Yeah, and you also you don't get the impression you're part of the software development team. And it's the truth. <laughs> oh God, how often is that the so, case? Yeah, yeah, so you're not uh, you're you're not finding out new bugs that they haven't found out. No, quite, um, quite. earlier. So. And, and in fact, quite the opposite. I, I've um, it's always worked for me. 
It's worked yeah. really, really well for yeah. me. Uh, yeah. It doesn't hasn't crashed at all, and it's been great. Yeah. I hope everyone has, you know, as good an experience I have with all the Cambridge kit. So, yeah. so hats off to Cambridge for that. Cause... Well, I've I've set up you know enough streamers to for for a lifetime basically. Yes, I've set up enough streamers to be put off by the idea of streamers completely. <laughs> yes, sure. Um, but sure. I found it, you know, I found the Stream Magic app really good. I I like this because let's say for example you would you were totally into vinyl. Okay, and you just thought, okay, I want to add some sort of streaming capability. I don't want to break the bank. I don't yeah. want to spend huge amounts of money. This little tiny box does everything, doesn't it? Yes. And actually, you could hide this away. It doesn't need to be on display. You yeah. could hide this away. Just use your app. Yeah. And hey, presto, you know, you've got a you've got a yeah. really cool one stop shop here. Um, well, it's funny you use that sort of uh, example because um, let's say I am totally into vinyl, as you know, and I don't. Uh, do an, do an awful lot of uh, uh, of um, uh, CD and all that kind of stuff, um, but yes, that would be perfect for me. It would. You know, I, it might even get me to prize my checkbook open. Yes. Um, and actually, the the thing is, is that it to me, it, it if may I just uh, grab it there? Be my guest. So, so, I don't know if um, anyone's familiar with the DCS Network Bridge, um, which is I'm not sure if it's still made, but it was. Last big time bucks, I checked, it money. was yeah, three and a half grand. I was going to say about three that. grand, yeah. Um, but basically, to me, this is like a kind of mini baby network bridge. Yes. Um, so um, I, obviously, you know, I'm not a hi-fi beginner. I've got a, a decent DAC, and I'm very intrigued by the idea you can take the digital out from this and just use the Stream Magic, the Cambridge Audio Stream Magic front end, which is, uh, I think, now in its fourth generation. It's the latest generation. But it's great. It's it's very small. You can tuck it away uh, where you where you know the sun don't shine, as it were. <laughs> uh, where you know because you don't want to admit you're into streaming if you're a vinyl no, guy, do you? True, it's kind of true. sacrilege. No, absolutely. So you could kind of put it under the sofa, couldn't you? You could. You know, you could. Uh, hide it away and yes. actually on the on you know secretly stream away to your heart's desire. Yeah. Um. And and in very good quality. And we found it is good quality. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think. Um, for if you take it if you take the R, the RCA out, they're they're pretty good. They're all right, aren't they? Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't think I've heard a better sounding streamer at four hundred and fifty quid. No. Than than this via its its uh, analog outs. No. No. Um, but for me personally, I'd I'd be straight out there plugging into my cord uh, Hugo TT two. <laughs> of course you so, would. Yeah. And then you'd have a great streaming front end, yes, wouldn't you? Yes. Um, and it's another source on your DAC that's already part of your system. Yeah. So it has a kind of dual use. You can use it as a starter streamer, um, you know, in a kind of relatively budget separate system, or you could use it um, very effectively. We found um, driving a DAC that costs considerably more than the streamer itself. Yeah, absolutely, so, absolutely, yeah. 100%. Yeah. Um, so, and, you know, I've, I've, I've just sort of thoroughly enjoyed using it. It's, it, it's not, the, it's not the, the best sounding streamer I've ever heard. No. But that, for 450 quid, yeah. it is the best sounding streamer under 500 pounds that I've heard, without a shadow of yeah. a doubt. Yeah. Um, and I really like it. I, I've, I think it's an absolutely super bit of kit. Yeah. Um, I quite like the fact as well, it's actually just got a standard sort of Fit. Sony figure of eight power figure eight. Yeah, yeah, which is yeah. great. So there's no sort of, you know, you don't have to plug in some horrible yeah. cheap Chinese five volt power supply, which comes yes. bundled with it, like some other yes. um, pieces of equipment which we've used. Um, I'm not really sure what your opinion is of those, but for me, uh, gosh, is it my imagination or do I feel like they actually sound a bit noisy? Yeah. Um, you know, I don't don't think they're great. I, I know that, you know, there's a lot of talk online about people putting these linear power supplies in, yeah. um, you know, and spending, I don't know, 200 quid or whatever on a, uh, you know, on a, a linear power supply that gives out a sort of pure five volts. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm, yeah. I, I certainly, I certainly know that this, you know, it just seems to just seems to work really nicely and sounds really good and a absolutely that's the, kind of it. The fact know, that so. it's got the power supply built in um is 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 fantastic. Um and um of course if you lose the mains cable, you can always go to your nineteen seventies Philips radio cassette 
and, and yes. borrow that yeah. borrow it from that. Your Sony so. Betamax VCR. <laughs> yes, quite. So quite yeah. and steal that, which is probably yeah. what I normally end up doing anyway. So <laughs> yes. But quite. it's got yeah, I mean, it's got AirPlay, Chromecast, it's Rune ready, isn't it? Yeah. Um Spotify, yeah. Tidal, Cobuzz, yes. everything. It does everything. Yeah. Um it's got um, you know, uh Bluetooth uh five point zero, uh Wi Fi, internet uh, int Ethernet even. Um and it's just all there, and yes, it's yeah. super cheap, and it works by itself with an analog out, or you can use it very profitably uh, into into you know a serious DAC, and um, and it sounds very good indeed. Just just going back to the the Rune experience for me, this was perfect. I plugged in the Ethernet, um, was fired up Rune. It found it immediately on my system. Yeah, uh, I, I renamed it. You know the name of the room it's in. Yeah. Um, and hey presto we're up and running yeah. uh, from a family point of view uh, my family likes streaming from bluetooth or from um you know f from from spotify <sighs> fine no problem yep. crack on and it works brilliantly for yeah. that as well so you know it really um caters to every taste so you, uh, you didn't spend four hours setting it up then mike I know, I know. I've so, I've got four hours of my life back. It's not a proper streamer then. We'll have to go down the Hi-Fi pub for four hours to make up didn't for it. Phone up, have so. to phone up the helpline. <clears throat> say it can't see my uh, no, can't see my network. What do I do? And, and so. I think we've we've probably both had to have phoned up the helpline on more than one occasion. Yes. And look, dare I say, and this is probably a tad indictment. We're both quite techy, aren't we? Um, yeah. And uh, and if we have to phone up a helpline, it must be. Flipping yeah. counterintuitive. Yes, uh, but this is not like that at all. No helpline required. Absolutely, uh, very yeah. much plug and play as it should be. Yeah. Uh, so look, you can use the Stream Magic app, which is brilliant. But you can rune, use Rune if you're a Rune aficionado. Yeah. yeah. Um, excellent. Absolutely so, excellent. Yeah. So I mean, um, in terms of the sound via the um, built-in DAC. Yes. Um, we found it to be perfectly acceptable for a. It's a kind of. Um, Cambridge Audio DAC Magic kind of level of quality. Yeah, it sounds a bit like one. Yeah, which, which yeah. is which is very uh, clean and tidy, and you know, decently well ordered and and reasonably enjoyable, um, and pretty much as good as you can get at the price. I yes, think. Yes. Yeah. Um, but when you put it into you know something else. Um, uh, then, then it really comes out of its shell. It, in terms it? of DAC, you mean? Yeah. Plug the, so plug use this as the streamer and plug it into an it, external it, DAC. Yes, exactly. Yeah, like, yeah, and, and that's the, that's yeah. a great thing. So you could yeah. buy it, and then you could upgrade it via getting a, a better DAC when you've got more money. Yes. Uh, yeah. And so on. So yeah. I think that's quite, a, that's quite. a really good. Really yeah, good we point. we actually tried it with with one of the new Musical Fidelity DACs, didn't we? And yeah. it um, actually sounded really nice. We'll we'll do yeah. a review of that Musical Fidelity yeah. DAC as well because that's worth having a chat about. It's yeah. another yeah. pint size. Lovely piece of hi-fi. Yes, or um, albeit you know quite a bit more expensive. Than yeah, that. So, absolutely. But the, absolutely. the point is, it's it's kind of scalable. You can it buy is. you can buy this and use it as it is, as it comes out of the box, and yes. then yeah. plug it into whatever you want. You yes. know, later yeah, quite, on, um, quite. via um, USB out or um, Toslink um, optical or yeah. coax. <laughs> yeah, yeah so. everything you need really. Yeah, um, which which is brilliant. So. Yeah, we played some we played some eclectic music as we always do, um, and I think the the sort of the underlying theme was, it, it's it's a little bit excitable for me. It's it's dare I say just slightly on the bright side, maybe slightly on the bass light side. Yeah, I wouldn't say uh, but, bright as much as just <clears throat> lacking a little bit in deep bass. Sure. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, but it does a lot of things, as you yeah. say, very credibly, yeah. very, very well. You've got to, you've got to remember the price point. Yeah. That, that's the key yeah. thing here. Yeah. Uh, and the fact it's upgradable is brilliant. Um, so we listen to. Here we go. Squitty Politi. Yep. Yeah. Uh, boom. Beg your pardon. Boom. There she was. <laughs> Again. Um, from. Um, yeah. Yeah. Which, which is from Provision. From Provision, which is a, so which is quite a cool album. One actually. of the best albums of 1987. Folks. You heard it here first, Pop yeah. Pickers. Yeah. Quite. Again, very bright recording. Very dynamic recording. Yeah. Um, Lots you know, of chiming. So. Um, DX seven. A lot of lot of boom. There yeah. she was going yeah. on in it as well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So. Swapping over from that to say a really lovely recording like uh, 50 Words for Snow by Kate Bush and listening to Snowflake, yep. I think, isn't it? Which is the first yeah. song which features her son singing on it. Yeah. You know, again, really nicely recorded. Yeah. Um, sound, sound great. Um, uh, I played some Rush. I played New World Man. 
Did you? I, um, this is a first for me, Mike. Sounded really good. <laughs> Sounded really, really He's good. He's going to see a Rush tribute band uh, next week. I am. This is so. so exciting. This is so exciting. It's fairly cool. Yeah, it's next, this, yeah, a few weeks' time. Uh, going to see... Um, what, think... what are they called? Russia? Or Rush, Rushist? <laughs> Rush home. <laughs> Rush home. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think they're called La Villa Strangiato. They're, they're, Pardon? They're playing in, they're playing in Abingdon. So right. There we go. Okay. So, uh, yeah, well, quick, quick rush. You, you've heard it there. first. So. Yes. And I've bought a yeah. special rush t shirt. Don't be in Abingdon in a couple of weeks. I've bought a special rush t shirt for the occasion, okay. which I might wear on a riff one day. Well, okay. So, All right. Well, I might not. That'll be nice. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yes. Uh, so, again, that sounded really good. Not an easy recording to play from their Signals album. Yeah. Um, but. No problem whatsoever. So, you know, really impressive all, all round. Yeah. Um, you know, really top bit of kit. I'm get, I'm very impressed with where Cambridge Audio are at the moment. Yeah. In sort of hi-fi world. Yeah. They're, they're, they're doing really well. They're making some great products. Their streaming products are, 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 you know, hitting the, right, really hitting the mark. Yeah. Um, particularly. You know, very, well, yeah. Really I, mean, I think that. they sort of, they seem to be, there seems to be a bit of energy there mm. and they're, mm. they're doing some, some interesting new products. And, um, you know, they were always kings of the kind of budget separates um, yes. market, weren't they? Yes. Um, and um, and they're sort of, you know, retaking their place, as it were, in that. <clears throat> but so. I think they used to have sort of some hidden gems, which would sort of punctuate the model range. Yeah. And now it just seems to me they're just doing hit after hit. Yeah. So, yeah, very good. Very good. Strong strong model range and even stronger now. Yeah, so. yeah. But this is this is a really, you know, cute bit of kit, isn't it? Yeah. Really, really sweet and loving that. Love yeah. the minimalism. As yeah. you say, it's how it should be. Yeah. Fantastic. Let's, uh, let's do a let's do a riffometer. Yeah. Let's do a riffometer on the on the MX N ten. Yeah. What do you reckon? Well I'm gonna give it I mean at the I was gonna say keep the price in, in mind yeah. here. For the price, nine. Four hundred and forty nine pounds. Yeah, I can't really think of any any reason why it shouldn't be higher actually, but I just don't <laughs> like giving maximum it's, Four marks. So, it's, yeah, it's yeah. a proper lovely bit of hi-fi for, for 450 quid, isn't yeah. it? You've got to give it 9 out of 10. Yeah. I, I can't see any reason why you wouldn't. And I think that's I think that's a cracking little hi-fi bargain right there. Maybe if they threw in a free bottle of whiskey, um, you could give <laughs> it a give 10. A 10. <laughs> oh, I'll just have a quick word with them. Yeah. yeah uh, you need a bottle of red wine. I mean, hi-fi always sounds better after a bottle of red wine. Yeah. It's the cheapest upgrade you can do. It is, yes, and you've experimented at great depth with that theory, haven't you, Mike? <laughs> Absolutely. So. Absolutely. And on that note... <laughs> on that bombshell. <laughs> so. Thank you again for watching this episode of Mike and Dave's Hi-Fi Riff. We look forward to seeing you again at the next one. Thanks very much. Bye. Bye. Bye.